convention and you're going to put them under bright spotlights? Yes. Oh, yes! Yeah. This is my breakfast slash lunch. Sorry. Run it up for everybody. All right. To get this rolling, we're gonna do something a little different. We need an audience volunteer to take this mic around so that we can hear your questions. I saw a hand go up really fast over here. The lady right there. Might as well work for somebody more skilled. No, we're walking for me. All right. She's got your questions. So hand in the air if you've got one. <laughs> We're not here, you see him? If he walks in, I'll make a big announcement and I'll go, Ladies and gentlemen, Quentin Flynn in the house! And everybody they told me to talk like me now. What? Look, your job is to carry Oh, go! You don't get to talk, go. <laughs> I've had that job. All right. <clears throat> um, this is probably more targeted at our voice actors, but maybe some of the other members deal with this. So, we know that the anime industry has taken a couple of hits, especially in the U.S. market the last couple of years with the exit of Genion, uh, Bandai no longer actually active other than figures in the U.S. Um, what's your take on the current industry, and for others, how does that affect your respective areas, whether it's uh, steampunk or the critiquing areas, and then as an adjunct to that, what would you see, you know, what would you like us, the fan base, to do to help support your art and make sure that we get, you know, the series, the follow-on pieces to basically keep us satisfied and getting the things that we want to see with you in them. I was told there would be no math in this. <laughs> Brought to you by CNN. <laughs> that was awesome. That was like that was very good. Uh, I, I think that, and in, in, as far as supporting the, the industry and things like that, there, there's no, there's no magic. There's no uh, alchemy. There's no, there's no mystery to it. If you want to see a, more of a show, you have to support it financially because that's the that's the language businesses understand. Like if you look at something like Spider-Man Three. It's a horrible movie. But you know what? That movie made $360 million. And so they continue to make more. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, just, it's just a matter, it's just a matter of, of, of money. Money does talk in, in this part of the industry, you know? And as far as the, like, the, the state of the industry, like I've been doing conventions for 12 years now, and every year they talk about the you know, imminent demise of anime and like there's too many of you guys so it's never going away but what Todd says is correct you gotta spend your money and not steal yeah <laughs> as much as you can because if you're gonna steal this is what I don't get okay, if you're gonna steal don't have ass and just steal anime steal cars you want steal clothing steal foods you want it's steal like houses two babies <laughs> steal yeah. babies why Anime. If you're gonna steal, do it all. Souls. Just steal people's souls. And then when you become, when your heart becomes black, steal hearts. That's right. Or hips. What's anime? As promised, Quinn Flynn.
therapy bills can be sent to Ryan Koss at AnimeMidwest.com. <laughs> hey, Clint, I got a question for you. Sorry, Clint, you're on the hot seat already. <laughs> I just need to make a brief announcement. Um, I, after this, uh, because I wasn't here last night to sign autographs, I'm going to be in the autograph room from 2 to 4 uh, for autographs, pictures, and uh, underwear. <laughs> so please come, or at least breathe hard. 2 to 4, as soon as this is over, I'll be there. Okay? Wow, what a great response. And I also want you guys to do some stuff for me on video that's going to be a lot of fun. You get to say whatever you want. I'll have a camera set up, so please come. I got a present for you, Flynn. Who do you think will win? Lino or Khan? Doing what? In a fight. Um, well, I'm pretty sure Reno would win. Yeah, I see you don't agree with me. Why? No, I agree with you. I know that Cohen is so out most for when he's always get, he getting yeah. kicked around. He always gets his ass kicked, right? <laughs> yeah, what's going on, man? <laughs> hey, buddy. You're pretty small. I could beat you like I beat my sister up when I was growing up. <laughs> what? <laughs> the child abuse, child abuse happens. <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> Hey, can everyone introduce themselves? Can everyone introduce no. themselves? No, what is it, Aggie? We don't know, it's my craziness. All right, starting at my right. Samurai Dan. Woo! Woo! I'm Wendy Powell. Right, it's not coffee. I'm Spike Spencer. Hello. Woo! Hi, everybody, I'm Todd Haberkorn. Woo! Hi, I'm Vic Magnana. <laughs> We will be having a Bible study from 2 to 4. And I'll be forcing you to buy my CDs and DVDs. I will hug you inappropriately and I will whisper in your ear. Otherwise known as Quincy Flynn, please come. Hey everybody, my name is Chuck Huber. Wallace, and this is 60 Minutes. <laughs> also, I'm Linkara. I'm Malcolm Ray. Hello, I'm R.D. Bardu. I'm Bastion Nick Rober. <laughs> Airship O'Reilly. I'm Adlando O'Reilly, captain of the Airship O'Reilly. I'm Matthew McKagan, hired gun for the Airship O'Reilly and the guy in the guild. These two guys are with us. Next question! I just want to know when Todd was going to be signing. <laughs> oh, hi. Um, it, we, I actually don't have one today, um, but, um, but I have a panel at 2 o'clock, but you should really go to Quentin's first, and then come to mine right afterwards, because we're going to... Whoa. That's pretty good. <laughs> but yes, I'll see you later today. Okay. I've now been told that the room next to the autograph room is called the Heathrow Room. That's where we'll be. So, two to four, hot and sexy. Bring it. Uh, this question's for Malcolm. Um, I was wondering, uh, how did you develop your accent when you were making fun of Dr. Huxtable? Um, uh, how did that come about? To... Oh, I'm sorry, where is... I'm right here. Oh, okay, there you are. Yes. Oh. Okay, what was the question again? How did you develop your impression of Dr. Huxtable from... Uh, 
Uh, Bill Cosby, how did you develop that accent? Because you do such a good job at it. Oh, <laughs> well thank you. I'm glad you thought it was good. Um, well, I basically just looked up a few videos and um, yeah, and that was about it. And <laughs> you need a lot of jello pudding. Yeah, you know, a little, a little something like that. And one of the pumpkin mop with the Much like that, and I was just practicing on the car drive on the way to to the shoot. Like I didn't have much time to really develop it, but oh, I'm, I'm glad you thought it was good. Who <laughs> wants a yellow pudding pop from the fiery depths of hell? <laughs> All right, uh, this is for Quinn Flynn and some of the other voice actors. Um, you played Marcus Damon in Digimon Data Squad, and yeah. when it comes to the games from um, over in Japan, have any of you guys gotten any roles or, or happened to have been asked to do any voice acting for any of the games so they could be ported over here to America? What? There, there are a couple like Digimon games and other games that you guys do voice acting for from Japan. Have you guys have had any roles or been asked for any games to be ported over here and do the voice acting for them? <laughs> the, the strangest experience I've had recording, uh, not strange, that's incorrect. Uh, the, the most interesting experience I've had recording something, a, a video game that has uh, come from Japan, uh, it was actually an e-manga. And so what happened was the, the Japanese uh, producers came over, and I just so happened to know that I was going to see them that day, luckily, because that's how scheduling works. <laughs> and I decided uh, to bring them uh, dashboard cookies. So what that is, is you take a pan, and you put, uh, then when the, the, the sun is so hot outside, you cook these cookies on the dash of your car as you're driving. It took four and a half hours, but they came out great. <laughs> they went, and when I walked into the studio, uh, and I, I also got pulled over for speeding, uh, and the cops like, he was writing me a ticket and he goes, man, you know what? Out of all the years I've been doing this, I've never seen something as cool as dashboard cookies like that. And I go, not cool enough to not let me have a ticket, eh? Okay. And so uh, I walk into, walk into the studio and there are a ton of gifts. Like he brings up a, a ton of gifts, like food and shirts and fans and this and that. Not fans like fans, but like fans like fans. <laughs> and so, yeah. And so, and he wants us to sign things. And I thought we were there just to record. And so, but, I mean, he's bringing like, not five or six things, but like 50 or 60 things to sign. Because he wants to be able to, you know, do that. And so when we're recording in the booth, this is the, the kind of interesting part, is that he's got a video camera on me in the booth. So he's not hearing any of the audio that's playing in the video game, he's just hearing me occasionally go, yes, nothing. Like, he's only hearing my audio for, for the actual project. Did you work on that? Remember the over at Sabbath? <laughs> but uh, that was a strange experience I had. Is everybody awake? Like, are you guys alive? Yeah! Uh, I didn't know if this was, This isn't a library, by the way. I know that there are it's dark and sleepy cricket, time, but cricket, cricket. shark eggs are hanging from the ceiling, but... Uh, what are you about to do? Yeah, answer that question! Woo! Let's go talk! Yeah! Woo! Thank you, Doug. So That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Oh, there was also hash in those cookies. <laughs> they were delightful. And that's how I booked the role of Dr. Riddles on Zatch Bell. <laughs> Dr. Riddles, riddle me this. <laughs> yeah, moving on. Actually, hey, I have can you a... get the mic and ask a question? Can you stand up so they actually know where you are? Oh, okay. We still want to see you. Right here. The voice of God. And that scares most of us on Sunday morning at a convention. <laughs> yeah, I have a two-part question for Doug and uh, Lewis. Uh, Doug, two of my favorite reviews you've done are for It and The Langoliers. So I'm wondering, are you planning to do one for Under the Dome? Which I, oh, is that the miniseries, the Stephen King miniseries that's yeah, going on? Yeah, is it a miniseries or a show? Miniseries. It's okay. called the uh, Dead Series. Yeah, maybe the, the one I really want to do, you'll probably see around October, is they, they redid The Shining on TV. Oh, uh, 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 You'll probably see that. It, it's 
sure I can get the one kid who talks like this. And that's like six hours, and it takes four hours for anything to happen. Yeah, he's making Stanley Kubrick's version look short. That's a sin. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I'll probably do that. I'll do that one. The other the dome, uh, I'll have to see if it's, like, if everybody's like, yeah, dude, it's really bad. I didn't do it. I, I might do it. And uh, for Lewis, Yo. I was wondering, uh, it, I'm kind of interested in watching them, I haven't had a chance to see, but they've been doing some of these superhero animes over there, like Iron Man, and, uh, and I think Blade, and a few others. So yep. I was wondering, have you seen them, or heard of them? I heard, I heard of them, I haven't watched any of them, I heard the Wolverine one was weird. <laughs> but no, I, I haven't actually watched any of them, no. I, the thing is, I don't, I don't watch any TV either. <laughs> I don't have regular TV, I watch everything online. Thank you for Hulu. Uh, what is your role on the airship? And for everybody that, well, is not on the airship, what kind of things would they do in a steampunk group? In a what papoo? <laughs> in a papoose. <laughs> in a sea baboon? <laughs> I was going to say, um, well, I'm the captain. I also double as the mechanic. Um, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't mechanic very well. I don't captain very well either, but I happen to be both. She just beats things with her shovel. They call mechanics. Sometimes you do. I think I should stay a higher gun for the airship. I'm the one that goes out and he's loud and just makes sure no one tries to kill him. <laughs> well, I was supposed to be the doll in general. I was supposed to take care of other people, but I don't really do a very good job of that. And they end up beating me up over it. But it's fine. <laughs> That's why I malfunction. That last answer wasn't malfunction. We don't need it. <laughs> I'm Skylark's mechanic, and I don't do a very darn good job. <laughs> I'm involved with the trading and marketing, and I'm also the only pirate on the ship, so I do all the dirty work also, and I am damn good at my job. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm, what would you do on an airship? What? I'm, I'm talking to Malcolm. Oh, I would, um, I, I'd set sail. <laughs> <laughs> to the horizon! Yes. <laughs> I would snipe things. Woo! <laughs> 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 uh, I would be the hot air. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm not sure, but I maybe would be stuck to, like, the front of it, screaming. <laughs> so you'd be the mermaid. Yes, I'm the mermaid. You afterwards. <laughs> she has nice mermaid tits, by the way. Uh, if I got to play a role in this, I'd like to play the cinnamon role. <laughs> I would want to be Chuck's hat. <laughs> Question? <laughs> if you could be anything on an airship crew, pirate crew, whatever, what would you do? I'd be a parachute. <laughs> I saw the Hindenburg. Screw that. I'm out of here. I'd probably be the cook. <laughs> He's one of those two. Yeah. That would make me the dishwasher. <laughs> And so art imitates life. That was, that was not so necessary. What, we just throw them overboard? Yeah. <laughs> Don't we care about the environment in here? <laughs> that oh, no, we care about the people that will You guys are organic matter, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna throw me off now? <laughs> Nobody throws Dan off the ship. What are we, prejudiced? We, we told her she malfunctions. <laughs> The hardest scene to portray. What was the yeah? What was the hardest scene to portray emotionally? The hardest what? Hardest scene. Hardest like scene. Yeah. To portray emotionally. Yeah. 
Would you get a stunt double for those? I usually do. <laughs> um, yeah, they take photos of me in the booth. We get somebody who knows how to act, and that's it. No. Uh, I don't know if there's anything difficult, honest to God, it's just, when it comes right down to it, with all the acting training I've had, and I can't speak for these gentlemen or gentlewomen, but uh, ultimately you've got to be able to just play and take whatever direction the uh, director is giving you. And if you can do that, and just let it flow and let it roll, it's all good. I think the hardest uh, role that I've had to work on was when I did the video game Rage, because that was... Uh, the, the voice was very down here for the entire <laughs> session. <laughs> and I had to do... Uh, <laughs> I based it on mine. Uh, and so, I had to do... <laughs> 945 cues in that voice, and I lost my voice for nine and a half days. And so, that was... Uh, that